What's the new gadget? Oh, you weren't supposed to see that yet. It was going to be a surprise. What is it? Among other things, it's a portable amplifier with custom effects that can be used to upgrade your guitar. That's amazing! Todd, you're a genius! I can't wait to try it out. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait a while. There are still a few parts I'm waiting on in the mail. Besides, we have more important things to focus on at the moment. Right. Are you ready? Ready. I've tapped into security cameras and will be able to loop footage of the empty hallway until you two get back. Be careful. Got it. Nice. We should go quick before she gets back. Dude, it smells like ass in here. Ass and old feet. Good <laughs> lord! We better make this a short visit. I can't take that stench for too long. Check out that painting. What if Packerton really does just work on a farm? I don't know. That painting gives me a weird feeling. Like a cold chill. Whoa, yeah. I feel it too. Let's look around. Anything strange in the fridge? No, looks like normal groceries and stuff. But there's a padlock on the freezer. Can you get it open? Yeah, just give me a minute. Now, when's the last time she cleaned this bathroom? Alright, let's open it up. I knew it! It is goats! I fucking called that shit, man! Also, gross. I feel like it can't be that simple. Let's see if we can get into those bedrooms. Alright. Um, hi, little buddy. What in the hell was that? A ghost goat, apparently. That probably shouldn't be surprising to me at this point, but I definitely did not see that coming. This is a bizarre lock, dude. I'm not sure if I can pick it, but I'll keep trying. Huh, that unlocked the first bedroom. Let's go check it out. There's someone in here. Hello? Uh, Mr. Packerton? Hello? I don't think he hears you. You're right. Looks like he's in some kind of vegetative state. Man, this is fucked. It's definitely where that rancid smell is coming from, too. Yuck. Let's take a quick look around and then get out of here. Hey, Sally Face. This sure is a shitty situation, isn't it? <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Young child, please. Help me. How can you be? Are you dead? I am in between, suffering for what seems like an eternity. 
Did Mrs. Packerton do this to you? We were in love once, or so I thought. Yes, this is her doing. Please, you must help me escape the endless agony. What's in the baloney? Bologna? I'm afraid I don't know much about that. This room is my prison. My tomb of infinite sorrows. I can never leave in this state. How can I help you? You must unplug this horrid machine. But isn't that... wouldn't that... It will end my suffering. It will free me of this torment. But... are you sure? Please, child, I beg of you. You must hurry before... before she returns. I hope that was the right thing to do. You didn't have a choice, man. The poor guy was in so much pain. It's what he wanted. Yeah, I guess so. I just... Oh shit, she's back! Quick, behind that dresser! If we don't make it out alive... I... I love you, dude. I love you too, man. You're the best friend I've ever had, you know? Same to you, little bud. Hey, sorry to ruin the moment, but what the hell is this place? Ashley, you scared the crap out of us! I can see that. <laughs> Man, am I glad to see you, Ash. I thought we were done for. I thought you had to watch Benjamin. My dad got home early, so I rode over here straight away. Sorry for giving you guys a scare, I... Is that... Mr. Packerton? Is he? It was him. He's gone now. He's finally at peace. Damn. And please don't tell me that this is what's going into the baloney. I hope not. I'm not sure. There's still one room we haven't looked in yet. We need to get in there before we leave. Oh, check this out. While we were hiding, I found this key ring under the dresser. One of these keys has to open that other bedroom. Let's check it out. Anything to get out of this room. We're in. What in the... Oh my god. This can't be good. It's like some kind of slaughter factory in here. This room gives me the creeps, man. Me too, it's major creep spill in here. We... we're in way over our heads here. We need to get help. There are no bones. What? There aren't any bones in here. It's all just... meat. Dude, no, come on. Ash is right, we should get help. Don't you see? There is no one who can help us. Every time something happens here, it's covered up. The cult, Luke, Charlie, Mrs. Sanderson, who knows what else this place is hidden. We can't trust the cops, and we can't tell our parents because they'll want to go to the police. They haven't believed anything we've told them about. Then what can we do? I don't know, man. Things just keep getting worse. Packard is chopping people up and serving them to... Ugh. I don't think I'll ever look at Baloney the same again.
smell what? You asked why I don't eat the bologna, and I've told you why. Of all the fantastical stories you like to spin, you're really not going to tell us what happened next? Why bother? You probably don't believe what I've said up until now anyways, and the story just gets more unbelievable from this point. Plus, you're probably going to cut it up and make me sound like a lunatic on TV. Give us the rest of this story, and we'll air it in its entirety. Without cuts. I promise you. Uh, I heard you mention Todd Morrison's name before we started. Did you visit him? They won't tell me anything here. Yes, we shot a segment on him yesterday. Is he okay? Is he still in the hospital? I'll tell you what. Finish the baloney story, and I'll tell you about Todd. Before we left Mrs. Packerton's room, Ash noticed something else. Hey guys, come look at this. There's some kind of trash chute hiding behind that painting. That's weird. This building doesn't have trash chutes. It doesn't look like it goes outside. There's no light coming in. Be careful, Ash. I wonder where it leads. No, this can't be happening. Please let her be okay. We have to find where this leads to. How are we? What are we? I I'm gonna shimmy down. It's the only way. Dude, no. You're not thinking straight. What if you fall to or land on her? If she's still alive, that could kill her. Uh, okay, yeah. You're right. Let's think. I know where it goes. What? How? N never mind. Just go get Todd and meet me in the basement. What's going on? Sal? What did you see? Is Ashley alright? Everything is going to be okay. Come help me with this. No one has used this apartment in a long time. It's in rough shape, but Addison can't afford the renovations it needs. Just like the fifth floor. Is that what you saw in your vision, Sal? It doesn't work exactly like that. It's more like a feeling of heightened intuition. Alright, you lead the way. Larry and I will offer support however we can. It's locked. Wait, one of those keys from Packerton's looked like the old apartment keys. Try that out. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about those. Perfect. There's nothing in here. Give me a minute to look around. Must be an undocumented sub basement level. It's definitely not in any of the blueprints that I've seen. Perhaps an old dirt cellar or something of the like. I had no idea this was here. 
The third key for Mrs. Packerton's fits in this door. A Ash must be down there. It's the only place that you could lead to. Let's go. Well, this looks bad. Incredible. The architecture must date back multiple centuries, at least. Centuries of blood and demon worship. This is freaky as hell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, which likely meant the area is presently vacant and has been for a while. Let's hope the malevolent history of this place remains in the past. Yeah, well, we need to get through that gate somehow. There appears to be an absence of any obvious mechanisms to move the large gate. They must be built into the walls. It's likely the apparatus for opening the gate is hidden. We better split up and search the room. <laughs> Intriguing. These green lights seem to be a part of a larger system. Once activated, their energy is transferred into the floor below. Additionally, they must be harnessing the same type of energy the Super Gear emits, since you are able to trigger them with it. What do you think that means? To be honest, I'm not totally sure. This technology isn't like anything I've dealt with before. However, it is likely that these were used for something supernatural, perhaps even to summon the Red-Eyed Demon. It's a good thing the cult isn't around anymore. The demon, too. After we find Ash, we should smash everything anyways. Just in case. Actually, I'd like to study some of these things further. It may prove useful in some way. It's empty. Oh wait, there's another letter at the bottom, with my name on it. What's with all the spikes? Like, dude, you can't turn around without stubbing your toe. Shit hurts like hell, too. Dude, those little obelisk thingies just got bigger. Scope it out. Trying to give me a heart attack? That scared the shit out of me. Sorry, I got the gate open for a second, but that switch won't stay down. Todd, can you come stand on this? Larry and I can go find Ash while you make sure we don't get locked in. Sure, I can do that. <sighs> Ready? No, but Ash is in there somewhere. So let's go. Be safe, you two. I don't want to lose anyone else down here. Looks like there are two ways. 
We better split up. I was afraid you were going to say that. Why do these things always happen to me? Crap, this place is like a maze. what that did. I think I heard something move in the next room. An old book with a wooden cover. There's a solid black circle carved into the front that's made from a different type of wood. The frail green pages are covered in painted symbols. I can't make any sense of it, but it leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. I hate to break it to you, guy, but I don't think I'm part of your bold mint thingamajig or whatever. This is just a video game system. My friend Todd modified it to produce a surge of electricity. I don't have any magical powers or anything. Twas thee who is still summon I, and without the sacred texts. 
is you who I have waited. This I am certain of. My time here is brief, so I must fulfill my obligation. Pray thee, take this letter. May the gods bless it thee with the safe journey and the courage and strength of what lies ahead. What lies ahead? Every time. Another journal page. I think we have to pull these levers at the same time to open that gate. We must have walked around in a big circle. The room behind that gate is in the center of this place. It's the last room. Ash has to be back there. An old book with a metal cover. This one has a complicated geometric pattern on the cover. The stiff pages are filled with bizarre script. Standing near this book, I can hear a slight ringing noise. It almost seems as though the book itself is emitting a low frequency. It's a little disorienting. I think this weird hex thing from Mrs. Packerton's desk is some kind of key. Whoa! Holy shit balls! It's the last journal page. Today, I lost everything. It's gone. All gone. I never imagined our world would end like this. There was no warning to the plague of shadows that invaded. Standing at the exhibit, I turned to look at Eam, who wore this big, goofy grin that was almost too large for her face. Yet, Eve's smile couldn't withstand the next moment. The events will be seared in my mind forever. A low rumbling noise muffled all the surrounding sounds and was swiftly accompanied by the hideous screaming of the masses. As I watched the smile dissolve from Eve's face, panicked terror settled in my gut, mirroring the look of dread now expressed. I turned to look behind us, where she was now gazing. The shadows were seeping into the tower and has already taken many lives. In an instant, they were consumed by the shadow. Eve let out a shriek so loud I thought my ears would burst. I had to hold her back from running straight into certain death. I pulled Eve into one of the drifters and quickly made sure she was secure before taking off. As we smashed through the tall glass windows of the tower and then through the atmosphere, the shadows consumed the entire planet. We've been drifting through space for weeks now. The first few days are fuzzy, most likely from being in a state of shock. Yet, as much as I try, I cannot forget about the shadows. A constant fear persists in the forefront of my mind. Are they pursuing us? Am I simply delaying our inevitable annihilation? Evelyn still isn't speaking much. She's absolutely devastated. I'm not sure that she'll ever be the same again. 
Earlier today, I'm almost positive that I saw a beacon on our radar. It was a brief flash, but if my eyes were not deceiving me, then that means we are in range of a habitable planet. It's a great distance away, so we'd have to use the remaining power in the drifter to make the jump. This is why I did not immediately act on it. However, our food cartridges are running low as well. I asked Eve what she thought we should do. She's been silent for hours. I'm not sure that she... It blinked again! The computer is saying that it's not only habitable, but that it's also teeming with life forms and is over 70% water. This is our chance. This will either be the end of my life, or the beginning of a new life. Both thoughts were equally terrifying. She's gone! Just vanished! How is this possible? Where is Evelyn? The jump was a success, and the planet is beautiful. Filled with lush forests, fresh air, and small creatures for nourishment. Eve would love it here. One moment she was right next to me. Then, in an instant, right after the jump, she was gone. Maybe when we warped, she... I saw her! She was calling for help. But when I started running and yelling her name, she fled. I have to find her, and approach with caution. She could be in a traumatic state, confused and panicked. I've come across a small town. Humans. I came across a small brick building. Standing outside was an elderly woman. She was the first contact I had with these people. She welcomed me as if she had been waiting for my arrival. Despite the kindness she presented, I could sense something hidden and dark deep within her eyes. I felt uneasy around her yet also a strong sense of familiarity, as if we knew each other in another lifetime. The old lady invited me into the building where she left me on my own. It was then that I met a younger woman, closer to my age. She was strong, kind, and beautiful. I was so overflowing with emotion that I broke out in tears. She took me right into her arms. We went into her apartment, and she sat me down got me a blanket and some hot coffee. A long conversation was to follow. I, of course, couldn't tell her the full truth. How could I? I would sound like a lunatic and quite possibly find myself imprisoned. Or worse, she spoke with the owner of the building, a man named Terence Addison, and said that they had an extra room I could stay in, on the fifth floor. She is a lovely woman, Lisa. Garcia. It's been over a year since I arrived on this planet. In that time, I've been studying as much as I can about the local society, history, and general ways of the people here. Everything is remarkably similar to my home planet, which has made it easy for me to fit in. I took up the surname Johnson, since my identifier, Serenth Camp 42 79, would likely raise some suspicion. For a while, I would go out every day to search for Evelyn. I was in mourning, and had to overcome extraordinarily traumatic events. I will always miss my old life, and my family. But it's best for me to focus on what life I have now. Focus on the good things. Lisa taught me that. She's been a great help. I may have lost my mind if it weren't for her. For the first time in my life, I'm in love. I've never felt such a strong connection to anyone before. I've been staying in her apartment for about five months now. Later today, I plan to ask her for her hand in marriage. It's similar to a union ceremony back home. She said yes. We had a wonderful night together. Everything was so perfect. Lisa's fast asleep now, but I'm just too excited to sleep. I'm having nightmares again, of Evelyn. We're sitting in the drifter. I look over at her and she smiles. Then her smile melts away in a burst of flame that engulfs her body. I struggle to get my seatbelt off, but it's stuck. Eve becomes a charred corpse right in front of me, screaming in agony. That's when I wake up. It's the same dream every time.
I'm starting to wonder if this is a repressed memory. Did Eve burn up when we made the jump and my mind simply blocked this out? If that's the case, then why am I dreaming of it? It's unsettling, to say the least. The timing isn't so great either. Lisa and I are expecting a baby within a few months. I'm both excited and extremely nervous. Prior to the conception, I did extensive research into the biology of humans on this planet. I am no biologist, but from what I could understand, we are of the same species. Well, I can't imagine that we are 100% exactly the same, but we are so close that I think this will be okay. This gave me an intriguing thought. Even though our solar systems are thousands of light years apart, could it be that the humans of our two planets share some kind of common ancestor? And if so, how many other planets are out there harboring human or humanoid life? Larry Johnson, our perfect healthy baby boy. I'm still reeling from yesterday when our child was born. I knew from the moment I saw him that I'd do anything for him. This is a life form I've created with Lisa, and we both feel a tremendous, unconditional love for our boy. When we first saw him, we wept tears of joy. I hope we can stay this happy forever. I took a whole week off so that I can be here with my family. As I was putting little Larry to bed, something strange happened. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow that moved quickly across the room knocking over a box of toys. Fear coursed through my veins. My heart was pounding so hard I thought my ribs could break. Flashbacks of my past flickered through my thoughts. The plague of shadows. My home world, Evelyn. Then, I looked down at my Larry's face, and he smiled at me. He's safe. I'm safe. Lisa is safe. If the plague had followed me here, it would have destroyed this world long ago. It was just my eyes playing tricks on me again. I've been stressed out lately and haven't slept well in weeks. I must put these fears behind me. I have to be healthy and alert so I can be there for my family. They are my number one priority. A few years have passed since my last entry. For the most part, everything has been great. I'm working my way up in the factory. Larry is happy and healthy. So is Lisa. The three of us have a lot of fun together, and we have another baby on the way. This one wasn't exactly planned, but we couldn't be more excited. Aside from these bright spots in my life, I feel as though a darkness is lurking in from unseen corners. Something is wrong with this building. Things happen without explanation or rationality. They would call this building haunted. Lisa claims she's never seen anything unnatural happen here, and that it's just people's imaginations. This time, I'm positive that my mind isn't playing tricks on me. I have nothing but respect for Lisa's scientific worldview. And how could she believe in such things if she's never seen proof with her own eyes? I don't hold that against her. But for now, I will keep my findings to myself. The old woman that was the first to greet me in this world. Her name is Alison Rosenberg. Most call her Rose. This morning, she told me a story of how she came to this place. If it's true, that would mean she's well over a hundred years old possibly over 200. It doesn't seem very likely, considering the average lifespan on this planet is around 70. Rose requested that I meet her later tonight. She said she had something important to show me. There was a sense of urgency to her words. When I declined, she clutched my sleeve and said there would be dire consequences to denying fate itself. I pulled my sleeve free and walked away. I don't have time for this delusional woman's games, and I certainly don't believe in fate. Though, as I sit here with Larry, I am starting to get a sinking feeling in my stomach. Rosenberg's words echo through my head. 
Why am I so haunted by foolishness? I need to avert my thoughts from such things and back to reality. Look how happy Larry is, playing his video game. He gets so mad at these little pixels on the screen, and so elated when he finishes a level. I wish I could show him the neural games of my world. He would have loved those. Anyway, Lisa should be back soon, and I'm going to make us a nice dinner. Tragedy prevails once again. We lost the baby, stillborn. Lisa is devastated. She hasn't said much, and hasn't left the bedroom in a few days. I tried my best to explain to Larry, but he's so young that he doesn't fully understand. He's angry at us because he thinks we lied to him about getting a baby sister. Our happy family has this giant crack in it now. <sighs> well, that's what it feels like, at least. Seeing Lisa so isolated is making this even harder to bear. I hate seeing her in pain like this. It breaks my heart. I'm sitting in the car with the groceries. It's freeing, but I let the cold take me. Addison apartment. The small, five-story brick building protruding from the dark forest, looming over me. I want to scream. Why? Why do I deserve this? But I am not so self-centered to think that the universe owes me anything. The only thing for me to do now is be there for my family as we attempt to crawl out from this hole. Last night, I had the most horrible nightmare. There was a man in the shadows, standing on a pile of bodies. He whispered to me. He was trying to tell me something, but I couldn't make out any of his words. I looked down at my feet and realized I was standing in a pool of blood. The entire ground was blood, and beyond that was simply... darkness. A bony, cold hand grasped my shoulder. As I turned around, a familiar face came into focus. It was Rosenberg. Though she looked skewed and her eyes were sunken in, like a zombie that had risen from the den. When she opened her mouth, maggots poured out. Her tongue smacked against her gums and lips as she spoke. Her words, again, continue to haunt me, even after waking. If you do not join us, everything you love will wither and die. The moment she spoke, I saw Larry and Lisa's twisted corpses. Today, I decided to finally meet with Rose. She revealed to me an old temple that rests below this very building. A small group of people meet here to carry on the traditions of an ancient society. They believe in an archaic magic that seems dark and unnatural. I wouldn't have believed any of this if not for the fact that I've witnessed its power firsthand. Yet, what they call magic, I believe it to be something else. A thought that frightens me. But I must delve deeper to uncover the truth. The journey I'm about to embark on may be the last thing I do. But I must do everything I can to protect my family from the unseen darkness. Sal, please read this journal I've kept over the past years so that you will begin to understand what is at stake. I know Lisa and Larry must hate me for leaving, but please know that I have loved them and love them still beyond anything else in life. And that is the very reason I had to leave, to protect them. You are a good man, Sal, and I'm glad that you and Larry will form a strong kinship. This must seem very strange to you, and I haven't got much time to explain everything. In short, there are forces at work here that are far beyond imagination. I've seen glimpses of the future, I've seen glimpses of the past. Now, I must play the role I was meant to play. I will sacrifice my life for those I love. To put an end to this madness. To stop the dreadful darkness that persists in this world. You must never reveal the truth to Larry or Lisa. They will only go digging for answers. And that would put them in great danger. Please, Sal, 
You must protect them for me. They are your family, and that makes you my family too. I'm sorry your life has been filled with tragedy, and I am sorry to say that there is more misfortune awaiting you. But you are destined to play an important role in all of this. In time, everything will be clear. Everything will be revealed in time. Sincerely, Jim Johnson. Are you okay? Ash? Is she? She's still breathing. Come on, help me get her up. Huh? What? What's going on? Where, where are we? Dude, you fell down the stupid trash chute. I thought we lost you for good. I'm so glad we found you. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Just a little fuzzy and sore. No broken bones. Well, none of mine at least. <sighs> Man, Ash, you wouldn't believe what we went through to find you. It's all thanks to Sally. He had one of his vision thingies and then he found this old cellar door in the basement and then we went down these long creepy stairs and then we found this crazy ass cult temple or some shit down here and then there were all these puzzles and traps and mazes and... Todd! Todd is holding the front gate open for us. We should go back there. Wow, this is so much to take in. I can't believe all of this is right below the apartments. Thanks for coming for me. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. So, what are we going to do about all this? Mrs. Packerton has killed a lot of people. And the baloney... Ugh. We can't just ignore this. Definitely not. Judging by what you guys told me about the inner rooms of the temple and about Mrs. Packerton's apartment, it could be possible that she's gotten herself wrapped up in the occult as well. Even if the congregation has long since dissolved, she could have stumbled upon this door, just as we have. Or maybe she's the last remaining member, trying to carry out whatever their plans were on her own. You don't think she's trying to bring the red-eyed demon back, do you? Hopefully not, but we'll be prepared if she does. And we need to stop her. Preferably, like, before that happens. I know going to the local police isn't an option. Maybe we should call the state police or the FBI or something. At least this time, our parents can't deny what's happening. They'll help us once we show them what's below this building and what Packerton has been doing. Ash is right. We should get our parents involved this time. Maybe we should just kill her. What? Mrs. Packerton. Maybe we should kill her. She's old, so it shouldn't be that hard. We can't just kill someone, Larry. Then we'd be no better than her. Normally, I would be against harming others, but in this case, Larry might be right. Todd, Larry, seriously, you guys? Think about all the strange, unexplainable occurrences that happen in Addison Apartments and Knockfell in general. The more I think about it, the less likely it becomes that Mrs. Packerson is working alone. She must be getting outside help. It would explain the police cover-ups of Charlie and the Holmes family murders. There's no telling how far this corruption reaches. God damn. I guess that makes sense. Sal, you were saying something similar earlier today, too. I don't know. Maybe this does fall on us to take care of. Maybe. You know, the biggest worries normal teenagers have are about petty things like being popular and having nice hair. Not us, though. We just have to worry about saving the world, I guess. So, what happened? We decided to sleep on it. It was nearly morning anyway and everyone was beyond exhausted. And the teacher? What did you decide? 
Did you go to the police? Didn't have to. Turns out Packerton got into a car accident on the way home that same night. She and the other driver were killed on impact. Wow, that's quite convenient. You can look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. It was on the front page the next day. Beloved Knockville High teacher killed by drunk driver. Of course you won't find anything about the dead bodies in her apartment or how she was feeding the students human flesh. That was all covered up. I see. I don't care if you don't believe me. It's the truth, and you said you would air the full story. Don't worry, Sal. It will be aired in full. I always keep my word, and I think the people will be very interested in what you have to say. Everyone is watching you now. You spoke with a great fondness about your friend Ashley. I understand that you two were very close. You even considered her one of your best friends, along with Larry Johnson and Todd Morrison, is that true? Yes. Have you seen this? <laughs> what about Todd? You said you'd tell me about Todd. Oh, right, of course. We shot a segment on Morrison yesterday. He's still in the hospital after what happened that night. He's still out of it. Unresponsive, still not talking. So we couldn't have a conversation with him. We mostly spoke with his doctor. I'm sorry, Sal. Apparently Morrison hasn't shown any signs of improvement. In fact, his condition has been getting worse. They say that the damage he suffered that night is irreversible. He doesn't know fantasy from reality, and all he wants is to die. When he is denied the release of death, he becomes extremely violent. I, I need to help him. Somehow, I need to help him. Even the doctors and trained professionals haven't been able to help Todd. How do you suppose that you'll be able to? Because I know the truth. I know what really happened. I know what's wrong with Todd.